Hey everybody, John Farian here with John Farian Live. I hope you guys are having an amazing today. Day today. Today is August 14th. It's Friday. We're in 2020 and today is Fly Racing Snows product launch day. And I am going to just take you guys through a quick walk through the walk through of the website. So don't tell anybody, but I come across the fact that yesterday the website was at least being built and partially updated. So I got to cruise through the website yesterday already. Shh, don't tell anybody. I wasn't supposed to do that. But I found it and I got through, then I went through and I investigated the whole website from top to finish, looked at what I want to order this year and all that. And so what I want to do is quick walk you guys through a quick promo video that Fly put out here today and we'll watch that together. And then I'm going to take you through the website and uh, show you some really cool products. So follow along, let's see what we can get. All right, here comes the video. So this just hit this morning. Love this video. They got some sick shots in this video. It's pretty amazing. Some of my fellow fly ambassadors making it happen in the video. So there you have it, folks. There's a pretty kick-ass uh, video from Fly Racing that was just launched. And uh, the next thing I want to do is take you through the Fly website. So, um, you know, I don't know if I'll get in trouble for this or not. I hope not. But, uh, like, nobody asked me to do this. This is just something that I was excited to share with you guys today. Um, Joe says, no sound from the video, and it's in slow-mo. So, yeah, the video is kind of a slow-mo video anyway, but uh, sometimes the bandwidth might be an issue. But uh, sorry about that, Joe. So thanks for dropping that in the comments. And as I'm going through this, guys, if there's any other issues you're having through the video, just let me know. But uh, I'm doing a live stream here, plus trying to download the video. So probably uh, putting a, a big push on the Internet uh, bandwidth and everything here. So let me just talk, walk you guys through it. So I'm going to be staring up here at my computer screen while you guys are over here on this computer. I've got a computer and a monitor set up, but uh, check this out. So you go to the Fly Racing website, um, just type in flyracing.com and you can click on the snow page. And as you click on the snow page, of course, uh, it launches you right into all of the new products that they have here. And there's some pretty cool stuff you'll see right off the bat. So you can actually over on the far left side here, 
You can pick through apparel, accessories, youth, by color. You can shop by age group, all those kind of things. Um, so different ways to kind of look through it. And so if you, you know, right now everything is showing. And so it goes through. It's probably the best way for me to show it to you is just kind of leave it all here. But just know you can kind of filter things off to the left. And so here's the cool thing, too, is as you look at and you hover over all the new products, the website did this last year and this year as well, you can actually hover over and it kind of blows up the, um, the image, you can see it better, and then it allows you to do a quick link. And so they have a brand new product series that I'm sure everybody's excited to hear about. And what that is, is around the uh, Cobalt Monosuit. And so they have, uh, it's an insulated monosuit, they have a um, just a cobalt monosuit that's like a, sh a shell only so there's different versions of it you can get here too and so i'll kind of click through the different ones with you here but check this out so for our uh, our traditional backcountry riders uh in the different places you're going to want to go probably with like a, a you know a non-insulated one and so but check this out this is kind of a cool feature as you zoom in i hope you guys can see it okay on my page but you can actually grab this with your mouse and your cursor and you can actually do a 360 degree view by just grabbing the image and dragging across it. And when you drag across, it gives you a view of the front of the, the outfit, gives you a view of the back of the outfit. Um, and it allows also too to kind of see products that tie in together. And so for example, this cobalt monosuit, if you were gonna go through it, it's a gray, gray and black, gray and high visibility green combination. You can see it gives you the price point here. So 589. So just so you know, like for example, their incline gear that they had last year, each piece was worth, I think, around 399. And so if you're gonna buy a monosuit, Ver, you know, versus uh, the full incline gear, which is amazing gear as well. You know, you're saving actually quite a bit of money here by going with the monosuit and everything there too. So I'm actually going to try the monosuit this year and see how it goes um, and uh, see what I think of it, right? I'm, I'm a guy who I think of myself traditionally as a jacket and, uh, you know, bibs, snow bibs kind of guy, and we'll do that. But check this out too. As you go through it, it actually makes recommendations for you of, of items that are kind of in along the same way. And there's images down below too. You can kind of just click the front, you know, kind of the with another image there. You can get a click check of the back. And then there, you can actually go over here and you can click on some gloves. And so here they have uh, some gloves that kind of match up with the outfit. They've got a, a hat recommendation you can see. And you can go through all the different things. They've got boots here. So it's kind of a one-stop shop when you click on some of those initial images right at the beginning. And then there's goggles that go with it as well, too. You can kind of see what the goggles look like that would match your outfit. And again, at any point in time, you can go back. And let's see if I can do that here. Let me go back a screen. And go back to the monosuit. So we're back at the home page here. And you can see they've got uh, uh, an insulated monosuit. They've got the cobalt monosuit in high visibility. They've got a blue and gray color going on here. Um, what else we have uh, there? Got to go through. And so then you get into the incline gear. This is the gear that I rode in last year. I had both this full gray set, which is the set that I rode mostly. And the cool about this product, the cool thing about this product is that it actually is uh, embedded with Sympatex, um, the actual brand name shell. It's the Sympatex. It's the same brand of shell in the waterproof membrane that the Skidoo products use. If you've ever ridden in helium gear and helium products, you can get into that. But it talks through here all the specs of the device. It's got, you know, waterproof. It's got two, 20,000 millimeters of waterproof breathable rating, fully seam sealed to block moisture. So there's all these advantages to these products. And this is kind of their top of the line gear. Um, I really enjoyed it last year because, uh, you know, the Sympatex, what I noticed about it back when I was riding the Skidoo Helium gear before I got involved in Fly, was very similar to what I experienced with Fly this last year. It's a, it's a windproof material that did a great job of wicking moisture away from me. I sweat a lot when I ride, and so wicking moisture away, but also then waterproof. It kept me dry all season long, and especially riding up here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, that's always a major issue that we have with uh, riding in the Pacific Northwest is we get some rainy days on and off, and uh, it kept me dry all season, and uh, the stuff held up really well too. But I love this gray and high visibility uh, green color scheme that's there and, and similar to what we looked at before you can kind of grab it you can spin it you can see what the front the bat look, look back looks like um, you can see the individual pieces you can see like the jacket you can see the the pants you got some options for gloves here 
Um, you can see there's, uh, I think these are some of the uh, title gloves, which I've actually got a pair of right here. I actually had a pair here. I was trying to fit and size my gloves for my order for this coming season. And so I had a pair here from last year. And so the cool part is they've got sizing charts on the websites. Um, when you get into the specific items as well, I'll show you that here in a little bit. But again, it's going to make some recommendations for you of gear that kind of all goes together. So you can really go in here in one stop shop and uh, just find everything in one spot. But let's uh, move along and I'll show you some of the other cool things that I came across that I really liked this year. So again, this first page, it's going to give you all of the you know, gear, they've got what's called snow cross gear. And it's for everybody, you know, all across the country, you've got folks who are in the Midwest and the East Coast and up in Canada that need insulated gear that's also windproof. And then you get guys like me out in the Pacific Northwest who our job is just to stay, you know, keep from getting wet, keep the sweat and the moisture wicking out, and then just having something to cover you. And so I actually dress really, really lightweight when I'm out there. Um, people are surprised. Um, don't tell anybody, Shh, half the time, I don't even wear anything under my snow pants other than my underwear. So um, shh, don't tell anybody, but check this out. So they have some amazing helmets. So these formula helmets came out a year ago and the ones that are 649 bucks, you know, everybody's initial reaction is like, holy smokes, what the heck is that thing made out of gold? <laughs> and so the cool part is you can get in here, you can click on this and it's going to give you a bunch of information on the helmet itself and all those things. So I'm going to click through some pictures here so you can see it some different angles. This is a helmet I might be wearing this coming year or not. I'm not sure if the program I'm on uh, will allow me to order that this year. Last year they were in such short demand. Um, we were going to wear the uh, the F2 helmets, which I wore last year, which were amazing. But I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these this year, ideally. It'd be perfect. If not, I might just pony up and buy one. But uh, I've got close friends who've ordered and bought these helmets before, these formula helmets. And they're a super lightweight. I think they're under three pounds or about three pounds total. Um, they're a carbon fiber and to get into the, uh, the information about how it's made, I'm actually going to play this video for you because it's a really informational video on the technology of that product. Let me know if you guys have sound there. Can you guys hear sound on that or not? Yeah, based on the fact that you guys didn't have sound last time, I'm going to guess you might not be hearing it again this time. If nothing else, it gives you some visual designs of how the helmet is built. There's a lot of really good view visual insights too of the what they do but top of the top of the industry technology built into this helmet so all right i'm gonna shut that video down because i'm not positive that uh oh you do have sound so daniel said that uh they have sound so but anyway the video's there I, I showed you the first part of it too so you can go in there and watch it later but there's some great videos in here kind of describing the technology it looks like it's a youtube video so you can probably search on youtube as well but amazing um, helmets. And then, yeah, I think, uh, Devin, you had uh, mentioned that there's a Rockstar branded helmet here too. So yeah, there's uh, Rockstar Energy Drinks. They have um, some co-branding that they do with those uh, companies as well. And so not, not necessarily for a premium price either. So this is their Formula CC Rockstar helmet. You can see uh, it's got kind of images all around. It's kind of a cool looking helmet. Um, personally, energy drinks aren't necessarily my thing, but, uh, not one that I would pick, but I know for those who love the energy drinks and kind of that rock star look, uh, it's a pretty cool, cool image, um, of what's going on there. And all of these helmets are great. Like I said, I rode with what they call the F2 helmet last year, which I don't think is available this year. It looks like they've evolved into some new products this year, different than they had before. So all the helmets are there down in the lower right-hand corner of the website. You can go to next. Um, there's some other great helmets. There's stuff for youth in here. Um, there's some other things like pit coats, Aurora jackets, um, some lesser expensive bibs. And then there's some repeats of specifically the mono shell and different things too. The original page kind of talked you through, uh, just kind of the overall package where you can kind of see everything together. And then the boots and stuff too. I'll tell you guys, there's uh, different boots here. Um, there's the laced marker boots and then there's a boa marker boot. Those are kind of both titled as kind of their 
their their mainstream boot. Um, I actually rode with the Boulder boots last year, so I'm gonna click on those for a minute and tell you about them. Um, these are a boot that, you know, frankly, if I had my wish, this boot would come in some kind of a BOA system because I've used climb boots in the BOA system before and I was really happy with them. And, you know, I was, to be honest with you, I was a little reluctant going to these boots last year. But after I got a hold of them and I rode them for the whole season, a couple things that I'll tell you about is uh, these boots held up extremely well. An entire season, I think I ended up with about 40, 45 rides in that range um, last season, which for a lot of people in mountain riding, that's like, twice what they would normally do and the bottom soles of the boots when I compared them against my climb boots that I've had before the soles of the boot actually held up really well they've got a really good material that they're made out of they give you good traction they're not slippery but then they're very durable as well so every mountain sled's got really sharp ragged edge traction on their boots uh, or on their running boards and uh, they tend to eat boots alive so other than that the boot held up really well one issue that I personally had is the cuff of the boot up here because I was using the uh, knee pads, the five pivot knee, get, knee pads, um, there was some rubbing and chafing around the top edge of the boot. And so there was some excessive wear around the top of the boot that would not have been there had I not been wearing the knee pads. But because my knee pads were rubbing and chafing, and let's be honest, I kind of ride like a crazy man sometimes. So, um, but you know, other than that, the boots held up well. So if I was spending, you know, my money on these for the 229 that you're gonna get compared to some of the other boots in the market, these are actually a pretty good boot. So if you haven't ever, you know, picked a new boot or not, they, you know, they're a little bit on the cool side though. I'll tell you, like if you ride in super cold weather, you may want to look at a little bit different boot. Maybe the marker is a little bit more insulated. Um, but for if you don't have trouble with your feet getting cold, this fly boot is a really good boot. Um, they got socks on here, and then you get into some different things like goggles coming up. They've got uh, three different types of goggles. And I tell you, I got to try out a couple of different versions. So I tried out their Snow Prone Zone, what do they call it? The Snow Pro Zone Pro Snow Goggles, which is their top of the line goggle. It's a $100 goggle. I also tried out a bunch of their Zone Snow Goggles, uh, slightly different. They look at a glance very much the same and very similar. But I'll tell you that, you know, it's worth the money to spend the extra money on these $100 goggles. And they've got some cool designs in here. They've got black. I, last year I rode with these exact ones, the black ones. And then there was another one that was blue last year and kind of high visibility green, similar to this, but different. I rode with both of those last year and they did an awesome job. They both lasted me the entire season. I had one that was, you know, this tint of the black is not too bad. It was actually just kind of a gray. So it worked for most of my rides. This is the pair I rode with most of the season and it held up really well. And the one thing I love about these is the, uh, um, the foam. So the interior foam is like a multi-layer foam and it really does a good job of sealing around my face when I uh, was riding last year. And then, uh, so this year I actually ordered another pair of these I'm going to be ordering then a pair of these red ones. So in my head, I'm thinking I'm going to get a red and black wrap for my sled this season. Um, my existing sled that's red and then fingers crossed if I get that job I'm hoping for, I'm going to pick up my turbo sled and I might do a wrap on that one as well too. And so that'll be kind of fun. So let's see what else we got here. So back to the page and we got the goggles there we talked about. Um, and then base layers and gloves. So there's different gloves here. Actually, let's take a minute and look at those together. So they've got the igniter. These are kind of heavyweight gloves for if you're trail riding, you're a Midwest rider, or if you're in extremely cold conditions, you might choose to ride with some of these, you know, heavier duty gloves. These are kind of like a heavy glove, plus they're heated. And then you have the igniter pro heated gloves also. Um, there's boundary gloves, there's Aurora gloves, there's tidal gloves, which are a real popular glove. They're an insulated glove which is these. So these are the exact ones that I had from this last year. And I used them quite a bit, but I actually found that for the Pacific Northwest, I almost prefer just a really lightweight glove um, that's there. But the Tidal gloves, I think, will be a good fit for most people. And then they actually have a heated Tidal glove. And some of you guys know our friend uh, Lyric Murphy. Um, she told me that she rode with these heated Tidal gloves last year. They're a $160 glove, but you can get them. And then uh, they're kind of a mid-weight, to lighter type glove, kind of a mid-weight glove, I'd call it. But then they also have the heater element in there in the battery pack. And so I ordered, I'm going to be ordering some of these this year to try them out and uh, see what they're like. I'm going to order a set of those for my wife, Edith, as well. You can go from there. And I actually have a pair of these windproof gloves. These are a really, really, probably the lightest weight gloves that were there. 
most of the time for traditional snowmobiling through the season. They were too light and too cold for that, but they came in really handy when I did... Uh, um, yeah, so think okay, I'm just looking at some of the notes here. So <laughs> so I see Ryan there. So Byron, yeah, he can hear me but not the video. So yeah, that's why we jumped off the video right there right away. I'm not sure why the sound quality doesn't come through in the video. But uh anyway, so these windproof gloves here um work great for spring riding. So like kind of those 40, 50 degree days when you're more worried about just keeping the wind off your hand versus anything else. And then honestly, just for having a pair of gloves for, you know, right now this time of year as it gets a little bit colder and I go out for walks, having a lightweight glove that covers my hands up uh, there. But you got different colors available. There's orange ones, all black ones. Personally, I'm a big fan of the high visibility green color. Like it's a, a, one of my favorites. All right, back to the website, and we're going to get into what else here we got, goggles, and then the mid-layer. So here's some cool things, too. So these mid-layers I wore last year, um, the lightweight base layer and the lightweight um, pants are the two that I wore last year. And I'm actually going to add more of these because I only ordered a couple of them last year. And, of course, when you go on a week-long trip, you need multiple pair of them. And uh, I really, really like these. So they fit well. Um, they're slightly on the snug side intentionally because they're kind of an undergarment or a base garment. Um, so whatever size you order, just know that they're designed as like a base layer. And uh, for here in the Pacific Northwest, they were perfect, right? So the lightweight ones. So I ride in temperatures in the 20s and the 30s most of the time. Um, sometimes even in the 40s, but having a lightweight material. If you ride in what's, you know, I'd consider traditional snowmobiling areas, you've got the uh, the mid-layer, the kind of the heavy base layer, they call it. Um, I didn't ride with those, but based on the quality and the fit of the other ones, I would recommend these as well because of, uh, you know, if you're riding in cold areas, you definitely need that extra insulation. And then here's another jacket that I ordered last year that I'm going to be ordering another version. I'm going to order the red one this year because, uh, again, I'm hoping for a red and black combo. But this is a mid-layer jacket. So these jackets I love. Back when I used to wear climb gear, probably five, six, seven, eight years ago, um, the climb mid-layer, I wore it as like an everyday jacket almost. It was kind of funny. Um, it became kind of a, a main jacket. And the same thing happened with this fly. So I love these weight of a jacket. They're a great, like a spring jacket here in the Pacific Northwest. They almost are kind of like a, something I can wear back and forth to work. Um, they're designed as a, ma a base layer, mid layer. And so, yeah, they technically are more of a base layer. And so they have some kind of rough looking stitching to it kind of intentionally because that's the look of it. Um, but you can actually, they're nice enough looking that you can wear them kind of out and about in different places too. But they're super cozy, super comfortable, um, do a great job of keeping you warm. And I keep these in like my tunnel bag. Like a lot of times it's too warm here in the Pacific Northwest to uh, go through the, uh, you know, and, and wear them as a main base layer. We just are too warm. But what I do is I bring these and I throw them in my tunnel bag. And then uh, I have them so that at the end of the day, if I start to get cold or chilled, or if I, maybe I got really wet through the day from sweating a lot, I'll throw this on just to make sure I'm plenty warm on the trail on the way back down at the end of the day. So last year I had a black one and a silver one. So I had both of those. And then this year I'm going to order a red one. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys uh, are enjoying this and kind of seeing some different things too. I know it's kind of the middle of the day. A lot of people are working, but as you guys know, I'm, I'm still doing the middle of the job hunt day here and uh, taking the time here. So there's some other things here too, is some protection items there. I'm um, not sure if they're for everybody. If you're a racer, for sure you want them, uh, but there's some other products here too. And so here's the knee pads. So this is a product that no matter who you are, I would recommend people uh, trying out and giving a shot because, uh, you know, I'm somebody who I've got pretty large diameter legs. Like I have a struggle, like finding sometimes, uh, you know, knee guards and knee pads that will literally fit around my leg. The Velcro seems like it's never long enough. Um, I know other people, both men and women, who have kind of exceptionally thick legs and they struggle to find products that work for them. Um, this product is one that was super comfortable for me. Um, I've got people and friends who I would consider more average size thickness of their legs and they also worked extremely well for them. And the sizing is adjustable. It's a one size fit all. And uh, they do a great job of protecting. So these knee guards here legitimately kept me from going to the hospital this year. Um, had I not been wearing the knee guards, I would have ended up with a, uh, uh, stitches. You know, I was riding some trees, had my lang dangling out to the side and I caught a, a really strong and sharp branch that poked into my snow pants and literally it wrecked my pants. Honestly, it was no fault of the snow pants, but, uh, the bibs that I had, the flies, uh, it just, almost like somebody shot me with a shotgun is what it looked like when I looked down at it and it hooked me and I caught it right where the plastic and this foam kind of meet. There's like the foam in there at the very top edge of the, 
the site um, or at the top of the knee guard and literally it poked a hole in the padding of the knee guard and it kind of glanced the plastic and then ultimately like destroyed my pants. But I know for a fact that if I was not wearing these knee guards, uh, it would have ended my day of snowmobiling that day and I would have ended up in the hospital guaranteed to have been looking for stitches. So um, super comfortable, easy to wear. They fit right underneath your snow pants. Uh, they're a great product. And then here we go, some more products that I love, the uh, windproof jerseys. I ordered a couple of these last year. I ended up with the black one and the gray one. You guys have maybe seen some pictures or videos of me wearing these. Um, the gray one's my absolute favorite. I love this color and the style. It looks really sharp. Um, the front of the, sl the sleeves themselves and the whole front of the jersey are all um, a windproof material that are kind of a, what you consider like a heavy jersey. Um, it's definitely not a lightweight summer jersey. It's the, more of a, a winter slash fall jersey. What I found is this product was something that uh, spring riding, like at the, those days that you go out spring riding and you never, um, you never need a jacket because it's too kind of warm out. This was perfect. Like I literally wore this and only this on a spring riding day with my Avi pack over top of it. And the, it, it kept the sun off me. So it kept me from getting sunburn. And then also any temperature between say 35, 40 degrees on the bottom end, all the way up to, you know, some days were 50, 60 degrees up in the mountain. I could wear this Jersey and it was perfect because, you know, you'd be heading down the trail at a high rate of speed. You'd be riding in the mountains. You'd be getting splashed by snow. Um, it's water, not waterproof, but I would say it's water resistant for sure. Water will beat up on that material. And then the cool part is on the back of it. There's no pictures here of the back of it, but the entire back of the Jersey is kind of a really nice mesh of uh, kind of a real thin, breathable material that allows kind of your heat and your sweat to kind of evacuate and wick out the back of your jersey. Um, so I, I wear this jersey all the time. I love it. Um, I'm definitely going to actually going to order uh, this red and black one now too. It's kind of orange and black, I guess, but uh, going to add one of those to my, my corral for this year. And then what else we got here? We got the windproof jerseys, some regular jerseys. Of course, those are always amazing. Um, they got some other body armor here. Let's keep going. And then uh, I think we're getting close to the end of the pages. So there's some luggage and stuff too. So uh, Devin, I don't know if you're still watching or not, but they have a, uh, a roller bag here too. It's actually a pretty good value. You got a pretty giant gear bag here for only 150 bucks. It's got the Rockstar racing and stuff on it. Um, you can see there's a couple different angles of it, but it's got some sweet wheels on it um, and all that. I think I am planning on ordering this year. Last year, I didn't order a gear bag for myself. Um, but this year I'm going to, they have on the website, these Ogeo bags, they're 340 bucks. And I think for the most part, you're paying for that Ogeo or Ogeo, however you say it, uh, brand name. Last year they couldn't get any, otherwise I was going to order one. And so I've decided to pull the trigger this year on the roller grand Bra grande or grande bag. Um, so this is pretty cool. Check this out. So you got the, the front of it the back of it. So it's got wheels and stuff on it too. It looks like it's pretty well made. And then this is a cool feature I love too, is these little things, they flip out. And so when you're getting dressed in the snow park or anywhere else out in the snow, you can actually stand on this uh, flip out little deal. It's like a platform you can stand on that keeps your feet from getting wet while you're going from your shoes to your boots, that kind of thing. So that's a really cool um, design item. Something I'm looking forward to using this year. And what else here? I think we're going to go over to the, they got the balclavas, they got gear, they got like the goggle garage, they got a dirty clothes bag, all kinds of neat things there. I'm actually going to jump because I think we're almost at the end of all of the snow stuff. Everything else is just accessories. You can get extra lenses for your goggles and stuff. But let me go to this. So this is another one I've really enjoyed is the casual wear. If you click on the tab up in the upper right hand corner and go to their casual wear. So it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to go for my sake, you know, with the things that I look at is in the men's department or the men's category here. And then let's go through and uh, click on all of them and we'll go through them here quick. But I'll tell you some of the items that jumped out at me and the items that I'm ordering um, that worked out pretty well. I'll give it a second here to load. So something you got to watch for is like in here, there's all kinds of hats and shirts and, and hoodies and all that kind of stuff. And so there's some neat jackets, some midway, you know, more casual jackets. These aren't necessarily riding clothes. These are more just kind of casual wear. Um, you can see the shirt that I'm wearing today here literally is a shirt that's available on here. I'm going to see if I can find it quick for you guys. I'll come back. But it's these action jerseys. 
So I've discovered this is absolutely my favorite shirt. It's like a moisture wicking dry fit type material. The one I'm wearing right now is this one, you can see. And it's been a great, great product. I ordered a bunch of these, the different design. And then this year, what I'm excited about is they actually changed up the design. So now you can get the logo, the big fly racing logo on the chest. Um, this is the one I think I'm most excited about is the bright red one. Again, thinking I'm gonna have a red and black wrap this year on my sled. Um, I'm looking forward to these, but again, the, they fit kind of a normal, kind of a loose fit to them. So for a bigger guy like me, that's perfect. Um, a lot of their t-shirts on this website, if you look at the fit, they will say in there on the bottom, whether they're a, uh, um, standard fit, not too loose, not too tight. You can see that's kind of all right there. Um, but then there's other shirts you're going to find on here that say they're kind of a slim fit or a snug fit that hug your body. Um, for a big guy like me, that's not what you want. And so I'm always very careful of what I order and how you want it to fit. Um, you know, if you're built like Mr. Scott Sparrow, you know, a smaller guy, fit and all that kind of stuff, uh, the, the more fitted shirts are probably nice. But let me just go through here quick and show you. So some of the hoodies I wore last year with this one, the corporate zip up hoodie. Um, I have a black one and a red one that I ordered. And uh, I'll just tell you is on these, what I found is they uh, tended to run a little big. Um, my normal size is like a, uh, a 2X, and when I ordered a 2X of this, it ended up being a little too big for me and a little bulky, and so I ended up going back and ordering a second one that was just a single X, and that fit me much better on those. Um, and so just a kind of a quick tip on that one. Most of the other clothing I found all ends up fitting almost as expected. Um, you just got to, you know, pick out if you're a single large, extra, you know, extra large, large, double X or whatever it is. So I've ordered some of these, these corporate hoodies I love. They're super comfortable, um, very cozy. They got like a lining on the inside. Um, these long sleeve t-shirts are great too. I ordered a black and, you know, the black and uh, white one last year. I'm gonna order a red and white one, a gray one this year. And what else do we have here? So just the t-shirts, let's keep going here. I think we're almost done guys. I don't wanna drag this out too much longer. I know I'm losing people here, but uh, just wanted to give you a full tour of the website. Um, you guys all know I'm a hat guy. And so we'll get to the, the hats here in a little bit. Let's take some of these off. Shorts. Let's go to hats. All right, so as a uh, hat collector, I've got probably close to 100 hats now at this point, probably 50, 60, 70, somewhere in there. Um, some of the ones that I've worn that I like, the one I'm wearing today is this one. It's the uh, gasket hat. Uh, sells for 25 bucks. It's a pretty good value. They've got uh, kind of a red color, a blue, dark, kind of a navy blue color, and this gray color. The gray color is kind of my favorite. It kind of goes with almost anything and everything. Um, this hydrogen hat is one that uh, one of our guests, Todd Kramer, had won. He had ordered uh, this one. It's kind of the one he picked out. And it didn't initially kind of jump out at me as a hat that I would love, but I saw it on Todd and I actually thought, like, that's a pretty sharp hat. So I'm going to order one of those. And then... Uh, some of the other hats that I'm kind of really passionate about, I like about is uh, this fly racing podium hat. I've ordered a couple of these, some different colors. Um, just the old uh, F-wing snapback hat, it's a pretty basic one. This is one that I wear pretty regularly too. And this year I'm gonna order one in the gray and um, high visibility green. So this one I've ordered, um, that should be sharp. So you guys can look forward to seeing all these on the show in the future. And what else we got here? Some beanies. So I know last year, a year ago, they didn't have very much for beanies available. So I was pretty stoked to see that they had beanies in stock and available to order. And you can go in here and this is the one I've ordered this year, this red and black one. Then in black, the black and white one also, I've ordered one of each of those um, and we'll be picking those up. So I don't know, guys. Like, it's pretty cool. A lot of cool products on there. Um, I rode with all the gear last year and was very, very happy with it. So, uh, you know, I can tell you that, um, you know, I've gone from, I'll, I'll just be honest with you, I've gone from wearing like Climb products, um, went to wearing then HMK products. Um, I've worn Skidoo products over the years and Fly Racing products. And so, you know, in the industry, I've, I've, I've tried out a lot of different brands and not just one item at a time, but like legit full gear setups. And I would tell you Fly Racing is legitimately as legit as any of them out there. You know, again, Climb, Skidoo, HMK. Um, I actually prefer the products here from a standpoint of... Uh, the fit and finish, the quality, kind of the fashion of it. Um, one thing I appreciate about the fly gear is that it 
tends to have some level of flashiness, but it's not so over the top that it's just like obnoxious, right? Like there's some brands out there, you know, I won't name them because you guys all know who they are, but some of the colors are just like borderline obnoxious. They look like you're dressing like a, a circus clown. Um, and I like the fact that um, Fly Racing here offers you some legitimate colors and some options. Um, I'm a big fan of visibility though too. So the high visibility green is something that from a safety standpoint, it makes you more visible. And so having kind of something semi-neutral like this gray and, you know, but it has the high visibility on it. And then I always pick out a really bright colored helmet. So that's for, again, safety for myself too, as I pick out a bright orange helmet or a high visibility green helmet, something like that to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm visible out in the back country. And then of course, wear the rest of my safety gear as well. But it's been a great, great product line. And I can tell you, I can't say enough about the company. The company itself has been amazing out of all the sponsorship programs that I've ever done legitimately. And again, I've been with HMK. I've been with Skidoo in a sponsorship program. Um, I've been now with Fly. And uh, Fly is the most eager company to get legit feedback on their products. Like if and when I have any issues, which is rare, I'm able to give a phone call or an email off to somebody over at Fly Racing and uh, they take the feedback very seriously and they continue to evolve the product and, you know, whether it be through, you know, quality concerns or, you know, just fit sometimes, you know, if something fit, like I mentioned earlier, one of the sweatshirts that fits me maybe a little different than I think it should, I let them know that. And then they're always eager to hear that. And then they kind of continue to evolve the product. So, I don't know, guys. It's a, a great day. I uh, hope you have an awesome season coming up and uh, things are good. If you have any questions, I'll be uh, able to kind of look through the, um, the the comments here. You know, whether you're watching live or you're watching later, I'll continue to answer questions in the uh, in the comment section here. So as usual, guys, uh, we've got a show coming on this coming Sunday night. Uh, Jason Blair from Next Level Riding Clinics will be on, uh, you know, this coming weekend. And he's got an amazing story of an avalanche that he was involved in. Um, back in 2007, I believe it was, and how that incident changed his life and how that drove Dan Adams, his one of his good buddies, to start Next Level Riding Clinics, which then Jason Blair is a guide in right now. So great, to, great show. Hope you guys tune in. Hope this uh, walkthrough of the Fly website was helpful for you guys and a platform here on my Live Large uh, show and my platform that I use. It's kind of a great tool to be able to showcase the, the website and everything. So you guys have a great day. Live large. God bless you.